Hey, uh, before we talk about this pretty impressive card that's looming this weekend for the best wrestling weekend, a lot of folks are going to have, I mean, this is something that people have been planning and thinking about and taking days off and booking their air and getting their hotel reservations, their dinner reservations, and their here's their pregame and here's what they're doing for their after party. And it's a big doggone deal this weekend in Wembley stadium. But before we talk about that, we haven't mentioned this a lot here on the show. But over at ringsidecollectibles.com, the Double J action figure is live. And this has got to be one of the cooler action figures I think you've ever had. You've had a lot of cool ones going back to your WWF days and your WCW days and your TNA days. But as far as the actual quality of the figure, this has got to be near the top of the list, right, Jeff? You know, and you know me. I'm I'm not the the by any means uh, a collector of action figures. I am not a um I am far, far, far from an expert, but I do have a circle of friends that I consider um, experts in the game, uh, Cardona and others, but uh, uh, several. And man, Connie, they just kind of keep raving about all of it. Um, I have more, uh, I'll call it quote unquote, buddy request. Hey man, when when can I get mine and this and the, oh, uh, uh, it's uh, Silva, if you want to chime in on this, uh, because you're an action figure guy, uh, and I hear yours is right around the corner, but no, I'm telling you, Connie, it has got quite the buzz, which is pretty cool. But, uh, here's the thing that also kind of go back in the attitude era. Uh, I, I pretty, I mean, I guess I had kind of the same outfit, but this red outfit and the red guitar and the tights and the logo now, Connie, shout out uh, to you <laughs> and uh, and others. The logo's defined. Uh, I just think everything kind of came to came together on this figure from a collectible point of view. But yeah, we're excited. I know my man Cody's excited. We got several, and uh, I hear it's selling pretty damn good. Hey, uh, speaking of selling pretty good, I don't know if you saw overnight, but. Um... As we were getting ready to go live here for our live studio audience, as we're recording my world, I uh, I logged into Twitter as I do every it, now and again. It's X. It's called X now. All right, fine. <laughs> I logged into X, yep. and while I was in X, I could not believe that Oscar De La Hoya was a topic of conversation. Have you seen why people are talking about Oscar De La Hoya today? Oh I've. Uh, no, I haven't. Well, I thought it was about his Club Shay Shay interview. He recently sat down with Shannon Sharp, and I was catching up on some of that. And he's talking about how he's zen and he's moved past a lot of these beefs and blah, blah, blah. And there's a video of him out today. Oh, and this might be BS Oscar De La Hoya because he's got a thong on and he's dancing around. Okay. And he's wiggling his jalapeno. Okay. You know yeah. I'm wondering, was there ever a scene like that in Club Jarrett back in the day where you were like, hey, guys, what if? I mean, did that ever happen? No, in Club Jarrett, no. It was um, it was just a lot of BS talking. Lot of, actually, there was a boatload of wrestler talk, and then we would get into the nonsense talking that you could imagine. And Oh God, telling stories, but you know, club Jared, uh, it was brought to my attention. You know, the original iteration of that was really a postmortem on the show. And then to look at the shows we were about to produce the next two days, it morphed over time into much more of a party scene, but the original foundation of that thing was to, to really get some work done, but no, um, everybody kept their clothes on Connie. Well, I want to encourage you, whatever you do. Don't go watch that Oscar De La Hoya video. Oh boy. You know, I was a big boxing fan and I was like, Hey, what's going on? Did he die? But was there something, was there more context to that interview with Shannon Sharp? Nope. I, uh, I, something I, else. Who put the video out? His girlfriend. X or current. I don't know all the de might be X now. Yeah. I was going to say he may have got on X and realized he had an X. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out. Uh, but all in is right around the corner and boy, you want to talk about stories. There's a lot of them here. Um, let's run through some of the card because you know, this is a big deal in, in Jeff Jarrett's life. I mean, it's been, it hasn't been announced, but the, the gauntlet has been thrown down. Tony Khan 
is a coward. Oh gosh. He doesn't book Hangman Adam Page versus Jeff Jarrett. Tom Campbell sang it. Taylor Swift sang it. If old Tay Tay sang it, it must be true. The final countdown, title versus career. If Brian Danielson doesn't win the world title, he will retire. Swerve Strickland, Brian Danielson, the main event. You've been a big part of this. You've gotten yourself involved when it's all said and done and the confetti's coming down and Excalibur and JR and Tony Schiavone and Taz and whoever else they got doing commentary that night will sign off. Who's standing in the ring with the gold high above their head? I almost don't want to give a prediction because mine's biased. Um, but you know, Conrad, when I think back and I, I was, I was going to say, I, I guess the moment was, was Calgary when I was at ringside and watching him and hangman in the finals is kind of what I don't say started all this, but was kind of the, the, in a, in a way, the, the launching point that the card now is signed and, and, and I mean, the match was made and everything like that. I saw firsthand the pain in Brian's eyes. He, when we've talked about it, he's not the biggest, not the tallest, not the strongest and all that, but man, he works through pain. And he recently, um, made the comment, uh, about, uh, work needing to be done on his body. Um, I just don't see him going out and I'm not going to say it's a guaranteed that he's going out, but it certainly looks that way, but, uh, I'm going to vote on Brian going out a winner. How do you, bet mm. how do you go? How do you bet against a guy, uh, with his track record? Um, and I know in his big matches, uh, maybe since arriving at AEW, uh, have not had the best one loss record, but when you take a step back, um, and, and, um, the different things that, 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 uh, you know, going into my single with him, uh, I did some tape study, a true story. And when I kind of look back on the progression of Brian, uh, and that's the great thing about YouTube. Hey, young guys out there, you can, you can watch a guy's career. Uh, if you, if you want at, at least some high markers, Brian always rises to the occasion. I'm not sure swerve understands that. I really don't. I don't think swerve understands that. Uh, he certainly has, he's been in big high profile matches. He's never been on the stage of Wembley to defend it. And Brian has been in the biggest of biggest biggest stages i don't see him going out a loser we've also got jack perry and darby allen in a pretty heated match for the tnt championship the aew american championship as mjf calls it will be at stake when he's defending against will osprey gotta think he's mm. gonna be a hometown hero that night mercedes monet is finally gonna hook it up with dr Britt baker that's got the internet a buzz and perhaps one of the better stories we've seen in aew Tony Storm and Mariah May, which one of these stands out to you the most as a fan that you're pumped to see, Jeff? You know, last year, last year, and I've said this multiple times, I think Will's athleticism, it, it just sets him apart in so many ways. Um, him facing MJF, MJF, I'll call him, um, not only the most controversial AEW uh, talent, but uh, he's a big he's he's becoming a big money match kind of guy. But Will, with his Japan lineage, uh, winning the big ones there. Uh, but and again, I think last year the the Jericho Osprey match uh, there was uh, just around the entire show so much pomp and circumstance. I think people don't even recall just how good Will was last year. This year, going in against MJF, yes, it's his home turf. He's been in the promotion now full-time, uh, I don't know, six, eight months. Uh, so his cadence, his rhythm, not that he was an outsider last year, but a, a little bit. But um, I believe this match, Brian has a ton of emotion going into his match. The MJF match and, and Osprey, 
I believe those two guys are going to leave nothing on the table. And I think we're going to see a new level uh, of athleticism. And when Will is kind of charged with that kind of uh, mentality, I think it is um, – I, I think that's almost a a match that you want to say, I want to watch that live. I don't want to watch the replay. I don't want to just watch the highlights. I want to get involved. I think that's a can't-miss match. Uh, that's one. And then the Mariah May, Tony Storm, you know, this is a homecoming for Mariah May. So there's, there's, there's a lot of emotion that goes into this. Uh, but what a culmination of timeless Tony Storm. And I think back to a year ago where, where, uh, that whole, uh, stable character were is. And then over the last 12 months, uh, I think that has, uh, I think that has the chance to become a legendary kind of um, story and angle. and Yeah, like the, the flag in the ground. Uh, mm -hmm. And this is the payoff. Uh, we'll see. But Mariah May, uh, a homecoming of sorts, I think that adds a whole other element to it. Jeff's excited about the show. I'm excited about the show. You don't want to miss Jeff Jarrett hitting the hangman Adam Page with a guitar, hitting the stroke right in the middle. Yeah, buddy. That's going to happen. It's going to happen this Sunday. Join us, and don't forget, it's UK time, so it's starting early. I think the zero hour is like 11 o'clock my time. Maybe noon is where it is in your neck of the woods. You can catch it anywhere you enjoy pay-per-view.